Who to start with? Let me start with you, John. I mean, when when did you guys first cross paths? Didn't we uh, actually for a long time, did we? No, no. no. Yeah, it was Frank and Pete, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I sent you before though. You wrote me that letter. Yeah, yeah. Soon after I finished lecture, went to number one. I was like, shit, the press, and John wrote this really nice thing um, about. Well, I don't remember, but it was like. Yeah. What Gary did essentially was listen to everything that was happening. At that Distilled it into something really perfect uh, and made the best record, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it um, sounds easy. I thought it was incredible because he just got rid of everything that was pointless <coughs> and got to the point. Sure. And it defined and still does, though the record's still. They're so, they're so distilled, you, you can't improve them. You don't realise how hard it is to be so simple. <laughs> People say my music's simple. He said, but you don't realise how hard it is to be so simple. But it's true, isn't it? But it's true. Okay. Do you feel pretty good? Oh, it's lovely, yeah. Uh, you, know, you have your own opinion about these things, though. Um, you see, my, my, my opinion of what I was doing then was it was as simple as it was because I didn't know how to make it any better. Anyway, and you've got your own insecurities that you were trying to. Overcome. And I've always been very aware, you know, I'm not, I don't really like my voice very much, I've always been aware that it should, could be better and should be better. So, and Crazy. so I went through, <laughs> well, I went through a long period of kind of burying it in the mix and getting girl singers to come in and, yeah. and sing things. It's only really when I met Gemma that <coughs> she, she, she was able, after many, many arguments and conversations about it, sort of convinced me that you, know, you, you might not be the best singer, you might not be the best guitar player, all these things that I had real hang ups about. But you, she said, but you do it in a way mm. that people like, and you should be proud of it and not mind it. And it, was, it was only after sort of many chats with her that I began to, I still don't necessarily agree with that, but I, I, I accept it yeah. you know, for what it is now. And, and so, you know, the boys went back up, I stopped having go with singers and the albums. But it was all just covering up, sure, sure. trying yeah. to make sure, a better album based on. Mm. My wife saw a sort of deficiency. Mm. You, you don't do things you can't do because you look stupid when you sound stupid. You, I, I mean, I know exactly what Gary's saying, but I'm, I, I've always liked singers who weren't very good, like uh, technically, but they're the best singers for me. People like you know Bob Dylan or Lou Reed or Mick Jagger, you know, they're not particularly great singers, but they are great singers. But they're not great singers in any conventional sense. Mm. But they can get a song over better than anybody else. Because there's something of them going into Because they're they're not trying to be something else. They're just working with what they've got. Sure. And not hide by and white technique. Yeah, and one of the definitions of talent is is making the most of your own limitations, isn't it? And I think that's spot on. Really. Mm. You, you find out what you can do and what you can't and then you work within that. I think you affect some of the Notice that tend to write songs that highlight how gifted they are as a player. <laughs> Endless guitar solos, very very complicated chord structures because you think because they can. Sure. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean that they should. Yeah. You know, you know how many guitar solos can you listen to? Yeah. Quite often, some of the best things happen because you don't know what you're doing. You're yeah. stumbling along. You don't have any of these structures you know, that you're meant to follow, mm. you know, guidelines that you're meant to stick to because you don't know what they are, so sure. you just stumble along. And, sure. and I've kind of wanted to stay working like that, mm. always. Mm. And it, and it is Keep the naive. You do it. inevitably learn mm. as you go along. Sure. You, you kind of mm. want to keep that ignorance almost about how to do it because then you'll do something that no one else has done, yeah. possibly. Uh, it's Gary, um, what, what's happening to him? Because it's great to watch. Because I've seen him in operation from when this kid from nowhere came with all the answers in 1977 or eight, and um, and the trajectory has been really interesting because it's it was forgotten about for a bit in, in the 80s when all the, well I've talked about the 80s being the most boring period Perfect. of for me, and and get recovered now by other generations, and that's the really 
exciting thing is, is that when music crosses generations, you know it's got something. Um, otherwise, it just it just gets forgotten. We all get forgotten at some point, but the stuff that gets remembered has some uh, substance, and it's really interesting to see what's happening with Gary, and also that it's really taken hold in America. I still I didn't think beyond. No. I thought you, you you do it maybe you yeah. know, have what's it said to have be gone soon. Yeah. Long before thirty. So right. I didn't just think beyond thirty. Yeah. It, it seemed so old when I was nineteen. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. it does. It really did. Yeah. Really. And everything you're gonna do, you'd have done by then. Oh.